The newly crowned king of the Holy Kingdom of Fargus, Dimitri, has declared fealty to the Church of Seros and is raising an army in preparation for all-out war with the Empire. As leader of the Alliance, Claude maintains a facade of neutrality amidst infighting between those who support and those who oppose the Empire. Meanwhile, the Black Eagle Strike Force plans to capture Alliance territory before Edelgard takes the war to the Kingdom and the Church of Seros. With sights set on capturing Deirdre at the center of House Regan's territory, she leads a march across the Great Bridge of Murden to establish a bridgehead. We're about to commence our attack on the Great Bridge of Murden. But first, allow me a moment of your time. It is something that I can only ask of you. Listen well. It concerns Lady Edelgard's uncle, the regent of the Empire, Lord Arundel. Although he is currently cooperating with Her Majesty, he maintains his own sizable military troops. It seems to me that his plans differ from our own. I assume you recall a certain group scheming from five years ago? Solon and Kranya. They both served Lord Arundel. <laughs> Professor, I understand how you must be feeling, considering what they did to your father. I know it must be foul to even consider cooperating with their kind. However, their power is essential for us at present, Edelgard also strongly opposed the idea at first. Our enemy is the Church of Seros itself. It cannot be toppled with the Empire's might alone. Those working under Lord Arundel are extremely hostile toward the Church. And the enemy of our enemy is... Well, I think you sufficiently understand by now. Until all of Fodlan is united, it is a necessary evil. As for how we deal with him afterward, time will tell. Regardless, Her Majesty and I wish to join our power with yours. You should know that in her heart, Her Majesty regards that group as enemies of herself and her family. They used her father, the former Emperor, as a puppet, and murdered her siblings with their vile experimentation. I believe Her Majesty may have told you some of this herself. That is why this was a very painful decision for her to make. I will do all I can to ensure her suffering is not in vain. And I hope I can count on you to do the same. As for all I have told you, please keep it in mind as we march forward. More importantly, I implore you to fight as best you can for Edelgard. From the bottom of my heart, I beg this of you. Much. Thanks so much. I have gratitude. Thank you.
We'll be capturing the Great Bridge of Murden, a key strategic location of the Leicester Alliance. Claude will surely be sending reinforcements, so we must prevail before they arrive. Our opponent is Judith, the so-called hero of Daphnal. We can handle her, so long as we don't get careless. The boy said to run if I was in danger, but... I could never do that. I'll hold out until reinforcements arrive. For the Empire! More fighting. A great for the fate of Bowden. Put me in there. Let's clean up. What's the plan? Let's make this quick. I will prevail. Through. I'm awake. Ready for anything. A boon for our future. What's my strategy? Yeah. Pointless. To kill is to grow stronger. Encouraging display. See this war through. The 
only possible outcome. One of us has to die. This is my stage now. Haunting. I am helping. Until we meet again. Obvious. It won't work. Is that it? Obvious. Judith, I'm so glad you're safe. Claude sent me here with reinforcements. Why do I have to put up with orders from that false leader? Because you're from the smallest noble house in all the Alliance, you whiner. Enemy reinforcements. We didn't finish in time. Don't let them secure the ballista. would happen. Ignatz, damn it! Such a good kid. He died too young. matter who you are. I won't hold back, and I won't fall to the Empire. Nice try! Going for the kill! Feels good to fight for a cause. You're relentless! You knew the odds. I will not hold back! This is the cost of war. Finally. Yeah! 
I will see this war through. such a full life ahead of you. I wish I could take your place. There's no reason I should die in this place. It's time for me to return home. I will not back down oh, one step. Yeah. No time for pity. numbers. Claude, I'm sorry. I couldn't defend the bridge. All who are able, retreat! Don't let her escape. If we can take her out now, the Daphnil territory will be ours. That will allow us to march safely through the Alliance.
It looks like I'm done for. Claude, I'm sorry. There is still room for improvement. Alliance soldiers! Judith has fallen. Further conflict is futile. If you surrender, your lives will be spared. Lay down your weapons immediately. You have all fought well. With this victory, we now have a foothold in the Alliance. The Imperial Army will cross the Aramid River and push the front lines forward. The fight will continue, but do not allow that to stop you from taking pride in our hard-won victory. Ah, this should put a stop to one of Edelgard's choice phrases. Well done, Professor. I believe it was, if only the Professor were here, we could forge ahead and change the tides of this war. Ferdinand, it is not necessary to tell the Professor such things. <laughs> We're not the only ones benefiting. The whole Imperial Army is stronger now. Yes, it seems the Empire finally has both of its legs to stand on. Don't you agree? <sighs> you make it sound as though I can't run the Empire on my own. Perhaps it's more apt to say that the Pegasus has recovered its home. Judith of Daphne. Oh, what a magnificent warrior. I'm happy to have the Professor back just like old times, but I don't think I'll ever get used to this cruel exchange of lives. When there is something you must not be conceding, you must keep fighting. The fighting has been continuing for five years, but now I am again witnessing the Professor's power. I hate fighting, but with the Professor here, maybe it's slightly less terrible? Oh, but everyone is working so hard! Stop it, Bernie. You can't be the only one complaining. I'm glad to see everyone so inspired. It seems the reappearance of the Professor has done much to raise your morale. Do you not feel the same, Hubert? Come now, be honest with yourself. Now, we must take advantage of the situation and blaze ahead. Our path is still a long way. Part 2. Crimson Flower. Guardian Moon. The Master Tactician. Having crushed the Alliance's army and captured the Great Bridge of Murden, the Imperial Army prepares to attack Deirdre, the Alliance's base of operations. Professor, what is your opinion of Claude? I can't help but wonder what sort of impression he made on you. That is inarguable, and his schemes are still going strong. With them, he's managed to keep the Leicester Alliance from the Empire's grasp. Since the beginning, Territories within the Alliance have been split between those who support the Empire and those who oppose it. Claude has been acting as an intermediary between the two, essentially keeping the Alliance pacified. As both sides are of equal strength, he's created a situation in which they've all agreed to avoid fighting each other and causing undue bloodshed. By carrying on as though the Alliance is united, he's minimized the Empire's influence there. <laughs> it's quite impressive how well his bold scheme has worked out. However, he is walking on thin ice. 
One wrong move and the Alliance will shatter. Speaking of Claude, Your Majesty, we should not delay in our invasion of the Alliance. It would seem that Claude has some fresh scheme up his sleeve, to no one's surprise. Is that so? Yes. The people of Deirdre have suddenly found it difficult to leave or enter the city. We can safely assume he is preparing for battle. But I am certain his plans extend beyond that as well. Do you not think we should take Deirdre at once? Deirdre, the aquatic capital. A city floating on the ocean certainly poses a challenge. Since it's deep within Regan territory, we haven't had the opportunity to attack it directly. However, now that we have control of the Great Bridge of Murden, our situation has changed drastically. They can no longer expand their supply line into the Empire, and so we can finally attack Regan territory. House Regan is not only Claude's house, but also the flagship of those who oppose the Empire within the Alliance. If House Regan falls, the other Alliance Lords will be tripping over themselves to join us. That is why we cannot fail to take Deirdre. Fair enough. Claude will certainly be a difficult opponent. The leader of the Alliance has had many things said about him. They say he is unbeatable in a battle of intellect. I hear they call him the Master Tactician. You seem to have lined up your desserts very meticulously. What you see before you, Lysithia, is a life choice. Oh, really? The most skilled pastry chef in the army has been asked to do the impossible in the heart of wartime. Source high quality ingredients, employ advanced baking methods, and create these two pastries. 
Wow, you've put a lot of thought into this. May I? Of course. You can have but one, though. And it should be noted that they taste completely different. I thought I'd split them between us, seeing as they were made so carefully and are so very, very special. Ah, thanks. So, what exactly is the life choice you mentioned? Also, if you are not partaking, I'll just go ahead and eat them both. Oh no. For you see, if you eat one, you simply cannot, must not, eat the other. Should you eat both, a pair of ingredients, one in each pastry, will combine to poison you. That seems unnecessarily intense. Just one won't kill me then? Of course not. But making this choice means you will not be able to taste the second dessert, ever. No matter what I tell you, you'll never know which one tasted best. And if you are underwhelmed by your choice, you'll regret your decision forever. So I should just pick one and be done with it? But you've already chosen, haven't you? Not between the pastries, but your life paths. You would gamble on the chance of living a long life, even if it meant losing your two crests, correct? Hence my current choice. Wait, whose choice are we talking about now? A shortened lifespan doesn't necessarily mean a short life. Even with two crests, you might live a long time. And with you around, the study of crests will undoubtedly reach previously unimagined levels. On the other hand, getting rid of them could help someone that I care about. Maybe. Or maybe it won't help at all. Unfortunately, one never knows until they eat the pastry. Even then, you can never taste them both. Hang on, Linhart. Do you mean to tell me you care about me? Since when? When indeed. You are someone I care about, though. So much so, I wish we could be family, you and I. Family? That escalated rather quickly. Although, having more family does sound nice. Anyway, I need to be going. Oh, and feel free to eat the pastries. I made up the poison bit because I didn't know how else to say what I wished to say. And because... Well, because I believe there are choices we can make where you can have both. I'll show you somehow, before the war is over. Are you sure these aren't poisoned? Linhart, wait! Wait! <laughs> Come on, Bernadetta, open up. Why are you so mad at me? I have no clue what this is about, but I'm sorry. You have no clue? Don't you remember what you did to me? Uh, no. I didn't do anything. Yes, you did. You did all kinds of things. But the worst thing was carrying me off twice. I thought I might die. What are you even talking about? Don't act like you never took me to that place! What place? Why won't you... Oh! The place with the pretty view! Why are you mad about that? Because you hold me around like a piece of luggage! Again! Why are you mad about that? Don't act all surprised! How would you feel to be yanked around like that? I'm sorry, I didn't realize... I, I was just excited to show it to you. Maybe... I went a little overboard. I'm real sorry about that. You are? Well, I hope you understand now. I, I definitely do. And I feel awful about it. What can I do to make it up to you? Anything you want. I want to show you how seriously sorry I am. Well, all right. I'd like you to... Um... Bring me to that place again. But promise me two things first. Anything. No carrying, no pulling around. Treat me gently. Sure, sure, of course. No problem. But that was three things, not two. That was one thing. Be gentle, okay? Yeah, oh, okay, sorry, sorry. What's the other thing? Um, I want you to promise not to take anyone else there. Only me. All, all right, I can promise that. 
Seems a little strange, though. <laughs> Why do you care? Come on. If you really want to apologize, hurry up and take me there. Right. On it. Here we are. Oh, look at that gorgeous sunset. This is it. The same view. After all that time inside, the sun feels like it's piercing right through me. <laughs> this little bit of sunshine? You really gotta get outside more. From now on, I'm gonna take you to all sorts of different places. I promise I'll be gentle, and I promise I won't take anyone else. Just you and me, all right? What? Um, but... okay. But if you get sick of me, I'm sorry ahead of time. <laughs> what? Good one, Bernadetta. <laughs> Sylvain, I've been looking for you. Do you have a moment? Hey, Lysithia. I was about to grab some food. Would you like to come along? Actually, yes. That sounds fine. Great. Let's go. Hmm. The dining hall isn't exactly relaxing, is it? If there's a next time, I'll take you somewhere with a much better atmosphere. I don't really care about the atmosphere. I just wanted to apologize. Nah, I get why you told me off. There's nothing you need to apologize for. Can you just shut your mouth and listen for once? Here's something you may have already picked up on. I very much dislike being treated like a child. I've worked very hard to be where I am now, and such treatment makes it feel like all of that work is being ignored. But I think you're a genius, and you work harder than I ever did. When I was your age, Yes, you already told me all of this. Back then, you were just as devoted to goofing off as you are now. Ah, so I already told you that. What a perfect memory you have. And there it is. You're always so quick to flatter every woman you come across. I knew that, and yet I never thought you would direct your antics at me. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry, okay? I know how hard you work, and I really wasn't trying to upset you. I just wanted to chat. I do not mind that you wished to chat with me. In fact, you might even say I was happy about it. Just a bit. Seriously? It sure didn't seem that way. Well, it's true. Your behavior is maddening. But in retrospect, I realized that was you treating me as you do all women, rather than like a child. I wasn't thinking about it like that at the time, and so I snapped at you. I could have perhaps approached the matter with a tad more maturity. Therefore, I would like to apologize. An apology? That is not how these conversations usually turn out. There's no need for that, though. Really, you'll make me blush if you keep this up. Listen, Lysithia, I want you to know that I meant every word, even if sincerity is difficult for me. You're as lovely as you are clever, and you have this strange charm about you. That's what I really honestly think. There you go again with your false flattery. I swear to you, it isn't false at all. And it's not flattery if it's the truth. Say what you will, you're still gonna have to earn my trust. Just this once, I'll cut you some slack. Don't get used to it. It's not like I can change who you are as a person. Sweet and tolerant, you never cease to amaze. I'll leave you with this. Don't say things you don't mean. It makes it impossible to tell the lies from the truth. Don't come crying to me if you carry on as you have and end up with no friends. <laughs> I have to say, Lysithia, your harshness is one of those things I find so charming about you. Ah, <sighs> you are exhausting. I guess the positivity is okay, though. <laughs> Here you are. Oh, were you looking for me, Felix? You were injured in the last battle. Are you okay? I'm fine now. Thank you for your concern. You really are troublesome. I'm so sorry. I didn't want to get in your way out there. I just couldn't help but worry. I was only trying to keep an eye on you. <sighs> what are you even doing on the battlefield? You endangered yourself and got hurt. Such a stupid thing to do. 
Yes, of course, you're right. I have no excuses. If you intend to carry on being such a fool, you'd best stay near me. Are you sure? I'd hate to get in your way again. You can... um... Hmm? You can keep thinking of me as your little brother. And that'd be better than going through this again. But I thought you didn't like that. Didn't you say you were fed up with it? I am fed up with it. I've already spent years filling in for someone who's dead. My older brother inspired love and respect. He was a great knight. He died. Since his death, his memory has followed me around like a shadow. Oh, I didn't know you had a brother too. <laughs> I don't let my personal feelings distract me on the battlefield. Still, do I really remind you of him? Well, you don't look like him. But something about you feels so familiar. It just makes me want to protect you. That's not to say that you're incapable or unreliable or anything like that. In fact, it's quite the opposite. You're the one who just came to check on me. You need to pay attention to your surroundings. You're reckless. Lives are at stake, including mine when I have to run over and save your skin. Yes, I'll try to be more careful. Thank you for being so kind, Felix. <laughs> <sighs> Whatever. Time for a request. kinds of flowers when the weather warms up. favor to ask. Hey! Hey there! Hi there. Hey, uh. hmm. Professor? Again soon. So, 
Liz. Hi. Hey, I could use a hand. We've somehow managed to take the Great Bridge of Murden. That means House Gloucester should now be ready to join the Fold more... formally. We've blown a major hole in Claude's plan to preserve the Alliance. We should press on to Deirdre before he has the opportunity to adjust his strategy. I have a request for you. I'll take it. I'll take So we've s that me we've blo we should press Ah, uh, I can eat. That looks... I wish we could settle all of this before the fighting begins, don't you? I wish it dearly. 
but few others feel that way. They fight in a bloody battle, take countless lives, and then finally come to understand defeat. They refuse to admit when they're beaten, and they keep it up until they've been utterly defeated. Of course, I understand that sacrifice is inevitable, but if they're going to surrender after being defeated anyway, why raise a weapon in the first place? A lost... I appreciate 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 Thank you <laughs> I'm glad you called me here did you go out of your way to select my favorite tea? Thank you for the thought. Thank you. Mm, this is lovely. Yes. the day we met you protected me from those bandits I appreciate it. I appreciate I pre Yes. <laughs> Are you sure? Thank you for the treat. This was fun. I hope you'll invite me again. What? Hey! Thank <laughs> you. 
Return soon, please. Hey, welcome. Come again. Brother always gets so fired up. Better keep an eye on him. Oh, sorry. I was just talking to myself. I hear you're heading out to Deirdre. Good luck with the battle. Okay. Remember the Death Knight who stabbed me five years ago? Of course you do. How could you forget? Well, it turns out he's a general in the Imperial Army. He leads the Western Front against the Kingdom. Once I knew he was at Garrig Mach, I stormed right up to him, told him who I was and what he did, and he offered me an apology. I'm talking about a sincere, heartfelt, solemn apology. What a letdown. What's going on with that guy anyway? Who is he under that mask? Lately, the Kingdom and the Knights of Seros haven't made any significant moves. I don't suppose they're going to stand by and watch while we attack Deirdre, though. That's why I've doubled our guard and instructed them to be extra vigilant. I will keep Garrig Mach safe. It is my duty and responsibility. Yes? Oh, it's you, Professor. I was certain it was Hubert coming to drag me back to my duties. Your Majesty, you must know your supreme talents are needed at present. Why not gaze at these documents instead of the sky? Doesn't it? And the worst part is that he's always right, so I can't even argue with him. But that's enough about Hubert for the moment. While I have your attention, I'd like to thank you for your help in that last battle. As you well know, I'm perfectly capable of commanding the army by myself. However, when you're around, it's somehow different. I'm not sure I can properly explain it. I suppose your perspective on the battlefield is simply sharper than mine. When you're devising tactics and tricks for us, it's almost as though you can read the enemy's mind. There's no getting around it. Your talent for strategy far exceeds my own, I'm quite jealous, in all honesty. Is that a fact? Well, if you insist. I suppose a flower from another's field is always more beautiful. I'll admit, I think of you as rather detached. So to hear that you have emotions such as jealousy is... something of a relief. Oh, but you are. Don't even try to argue. But I suppose I'm much the same. I've also distanced myself from the ordinary world. Friends. That word somehow doesn't seem adequate. Besides, we've been friends for a long time, you and I. By now, we're so much more than that, at least in my mind. You know, instead of Edelgard, you can call me just... L, if you so please. That's what my parents and closest sisters used to call me when I was little. Now there's no one left who calls me L. But with you, well, I think I could allow it. In fact, it would mean a great deal to me. Why? Hmm. Well, you have stood beside me and shared my burdens. As I said, you are much more than a friend. In truth, you are like family to me. I suppose that's why.
without the support of the pro-imperialist lords, the Alliance is greatly weakened. Even so, I don't feel great about all this. We're gonna be fighting Claude. We can't. You're right. Claude has such unusual strategies for toying with his enemies. Even with you here, this battle will be very challenging. when we win battles, and I'm always relieved when our friends make it back safe. On the other hand, it's hard to watch the enemy die. Even worse when it's someone you know. <sighs> Perhaps it would have been better if I'd just stayed with the opera. You're right, Professor. I'll never regret the choices I've made. Now you just have to lead us to victory, so everyone else can let go of their regrets too. Dare Drew, the aquatic capital. I've heard it's a magnificent city, you know? If we're going, I wish it wasn't to wage war. It'd be more fun to visit with a cute girl on my arm. Yeah? Maybe you and me? That'd be a good reason to survive the war. <laughs> Well, one sec, and off. What's going on? So we've somehow managed that me we should press So that me we've blown him we should press I'll take it Well done professor Thank you Each 
battle a victory. Need something? This one? You're all set. See you again soon. Praise. I'm. 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 
There's something I'd like... Okay. Yes. We did. I'd never have learned. Can't let this power go unused.
it's a nice As expected. Set my sight. 